Last time on SCFG Live. Class dismissed! Wait, what? I need to call Liv. T didn't understand what Dr. Sally was talking about. Hey Liv, um, do you have a second? Bronwyn, a friend of the show, came and explained what centrifuges were to Liv and T. Well, our friend Bronwyn is a bit of an expert. Let's give her a call and see if she can explain it further. Bronwyn, I need some help! A centrifuge is a tool that scientists use in order to understand the separation of liquids in different densities. We explored the word centrifugal force. What kind of force? Centrifugal force. Centrifugal force describes the movement of an object that is traveling in a circle away from the center of that circle. Centripetal force? Yes, the tension in a string applies centripetal force on the rock, keeping it traveling in a circle around the stick. Huh. And the definition of density. Density is how much space an object or substance takes up in relation to the amount of its mass. Liv and T then made their very own centrifuges. But nice and secure. Okay. And now, time for part two of that experiment. Well, um, the next steps we have will be kind of messy, so I think we should put down some reinforcements, make sure our area doesn't get all dirty. Totally agree, Liv. Let's put them down. Okay, so we have two cups, and we're going to make sure our cups are labeled cups one and cups two. Great. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our glitter, and we're actually going to put this in cup one. Okay. But first, we're going to measure it. All right. So what you want to do, young scientists, is take a little bit of the glitter and measure it by putting about as much as it would fill the top of a cap. Good job, Liv. Wow. Pretty color. That's perfect. Alrighty. And I'm putting it in cup number one? Cup number one. Alrighty. Yay. Beautiful. Okay. So what we're going to do next is we're going to add some water to cup two. And how much water should I add to you? I'd say maybe to like about the third line. Yeah, okay. sure. Like that? Yeah, I think Beautiful. that's pretty good. All right, so next we're gonna take our bigger pipette and we're going to get about 10 milliliters of water and put it into our first cup. So let's do that. Remember again, scientists, squeeze at the top so you make sure all the air bubbles are out. Put it into your liquid. Good stuff all the way up. And it looks like I got about mm, a little more than six. Six and a half? Yes. Let me see if it gets more. Oh! Oh! Okay. <laughs> Maybe we'll do some math and we'll do four more after this. Yeah, so there's six right there. Tap up all the air. Ooh, that's mm. pretty. Wow. Wow. That makes it look so cool it already. Does. I know it's not even the experiment, but it looks really cool. I really like that. And then four more. That's about Beautiful. Right. Yeah, right there. And then there's our 10 milliliters of water in our glitter. Right. And then what next is we take our syrup. So we have our syrup in these little tiny containers. I think it would be easier just to pour them into the beaker totally. and then pour it from the beaker into our cup. So let me just pour this syrup on in. We're gonna add 30 milliliters of syrup to our beaker. And it says here that 50 milliliters is right there. Right there. Pour all the syrup in there. Yay. The last thing you have to do is put some dish detergent into the cup. <laughs> Just one little drop. Lovely drop. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and last thing um, with our little mixture, I'm just gonna like stir it all up with our little pipette. Stir and it. then we are gonna um, Put one or 0.4 milliliters um, of this um, substance that we've created into our miniature centrifuge tubes. Cool. So I'll squeeze all the air out first, then I'll go in, get some of that 
Ooh, syrup glitter that goodness. That was a good, like, pipette insertion. Thank you. Yeah. All right, got some wow. bubbles there from the, from the soap. Just gonna pop those. I'm gonna leave a little bit um, of room before I cap it off, just so we don't um, get any excess liquid out on these tubes. In case you were watching. <laughs> Alrighty, and looks like we have our two centrifuge tubes filled up with our syrup, glitter, water, dish soap yeah. concoction. Yes. Okay, so we want to take one of these little vials and put it here, this top line. And we're gonna take another one of these vials and put it here. This top line. I guess it's kind of the top when you flip it upside down. So I'll do the front and Liv will do the back. The result. The result. Yeah. The result. All right, Liv, your turn. Beautiful. So it's taped up here on this top. So what I'm gonna do is tape it on the bottom so they're directly opposite from each other. Just like we did with the button. Yes. And I'm making sure the same side um, is facing the center. So the top of the cap is gonna be facing the center on both of these centrifuge tubes. Good job, Liv. Thank you. I'm an expert at taping. Oh my gosh. Alrighty, so after everything is um, nice and taped, it should look something like this. So the front you have one, and then the back side you have another one, and they are opposite of each other. All right, so now, things you need to see the separation between the glitter and the rest of our substance. So I'm gonna do it a couple times, we will do it. Can I give it a try? Of course, <laughs> go ahead. Thanks. All right. Wow. Oh, oh, there it goes. Ooh. Wow. And it looks like if I pull it a little tight and then pull it back, that's what makes it move. Oh you pull gosh. in and then out again. Wow, and it looks like all that glitter gathered to the bottom or the outermost edge um, you know, of our, our CD. And it looks like the same thing happened to the other one too. So it's very important that we understand that the reason why it did fall to the bottom is because that this substance is more dense than the rest of the substances, the water, the dish soap, the syrup that we have in here. And that's what happens when you put things through a centrifuge. When you put liquids or substances in a centrifuge, they separate from one another thanks to the centrifugal force and the denser object goes to, as you can see, the bottom. And the less dense object goes more to the top. Wow, T, that's so amazing. That, that separation is so cool. I'm, I'm amazed that we made our own centrifuge just like that. Yeah, and you know what's even cooler is that our friend Caitlin, Dr. Caitlin, is next door and she has some clips to show us about her own real life centrifuge. Really? I can't wait. Let's check it out. Yeah. Hi, it's Dr. Caitlin again, and today we're going to use a centrifuge, which is a machine that enables us to separate liquids from solids or liquids from liquids based on how dense they are. 
So this is a machine that is basically working with gravity and creating a force that's going to pull things apart from each other. So a centrifuge has a bowl and a rotor, and a rotor goes around and around. And each of these rotors has a bunch of slots in it. So that's where we put our sample. So today I have two samples, and in the pink part, there's some liquid. And in the clear part, you can see it's empty. So somehow this centrifuge will enable us to get the liquid from the top all the way into the bottom. So we always want to balance our centrifuge, which means if there's one tube on this side, there's got to be one tube on this side. We put the lid on to keep our samples in the bowl because it's going to go really, really fast and generate a lot of force. So we want to set a time. We can choose one minute and that's how long it's going to spin. And then we can choose the speed. And the speed setting comes in RPM, which is rotations per minute. So that bowl, that rotor in there, it's going to rotate however many times per minute we set it. We want it to go really, really fast. So we're going to choose 13 RPMs. And that is going to generate a force that works against gravity to pull this liquid through those tubes. Let's see if it works. That sound is the centrifuge spinning around and around, generating force. So we're generating centrifugal force by the action of this rotor spinning around and around. And that will help us separate the liquids through the tube based on how dense they are. So if they're very dense, all of this force will pull them to the bottom. If they're not very dense, they're gonna stay at the top. So in three seconds, we should see that we generated enough force to separate this dense liquid to the bottom of our tube. So we wait for the rotor to stop spinning. So it's safe to open. Let's see what happened. So remember the liquid was in the pink part of our tubes. And now, it's at the bottom. Thanks, gravity. <gasps> Bronwyn, hey! Uh, we finally made that glitter fuse. Oh, what's sparkling, young scientist? Check out our new glitter centrifuge. Wow, we added color, sparkles, and just about anything that'll make it pop. Glittery centrifuges? Now that's a unique approach to science. We wanted to add a shiny touch to our experiments. Who says the science can't be fabulous? You two simply don't fail to bring creativity into science. I'm excited to try this myself. Well, when we make these again, we'll make sure to give you a front row seat to the glitter extravaganza. I'm excited! I hope you all learned a lot today about centrifugal force, centripetal force, and density. You know, I feel like we might get into that last topic again soon. Density? Yes! Oh my gosh, yeah! That's the spirit. I'll be looking forward to it. All right. Until then, young scientists, stay curious. Happy experimenting. And stay sparkly. Bye.